Hey guys, so today's video is um, a one topic video about something I've been talking about kind of a lot recently, um, and it is the Ace Family. So before you get into the video, subscribe with the bell, like, comment for engagement, and you'll get more of this content popping up, hopefully. The recommendation thing on YouTube is kind of broken right now, but we move, we move and we prosper, hopefully. Um, so the Ace Family, let's give a little recap just for anyone that hasn't been here or has been under a rock. Um, Ace Family, family channel, um, make a lot of money, get a lot of views, a lot of brand deals, businesses, that kind of a thing. Recently though, they've been getting a lot of lawsuits being thrown their way. So um, I actually found this list from Sloan who has been very good at like getting all the documents out there and like collecting all into one. And I love watching his videos. So we've got Austin versus LiveXI for obviously the fight. He didn't pay anyone and he heavily like overvalued what they would make. Um, and they made way less than he thought they would make. So it, they're struggling to pay people right now. And this lawsuit is for a hundred million dollars. Um, then there's LiveXI Live versus Austin. So they're kind of suing each other. TBL versus 1212 Gateway, which is Catherine's skincare brand. Um, Ace Hat versus Ahern Rentals, which is for the exotic cars that he rented for the fight and then didn't pay them for, for the cars. Unpaid Landlord versus Landon. Ace Hat versus TNL Construction. Subify versus Ace Hat. Taylor Holder versus Austin. And I'm pretty sure Nate Wyatt is also suing um, Austin. Then we have Michael Lev versus Austin. Ahern versus T TNL, which involves Ace Hat. Um, Beverly Hills versus Austin McBroom, which is for causing chaos in the streets of Beverly Hills. And he's being sued for about $600,000 for that. And then 360 Sourcing versus 1212 Gateway, which is Catherine McBroom's skincare line. And this is the most recent lawsuit. Um, and it's to do with her not paying for ingredients and um, supplies for the brand. Anyway, that's the list, right? And then another thing that happened, ignore this nail. I've been going through it, okay? These black nails have brought nothing but bad luck into my life. And they need to go. I need to go back to pink. We all know that I love pink. This is an ongoing thing on my channel. Pink makes me feel pretty. It makes me feel good. This was supposed to be um, moving away from that for a minute. Because like Halloween, winter, vibes. No, pink. Pink is where I thrive. When I had pink nails, they didn't break. And when I had black nails, um, they would crack and hurt. So I am done. Let's move on with our life now. Now that we've acknowledged what's going on here. Let's move on. So obviously they have their house, which is a compound. It is huge, humongous, if you will. And the reason why it's humongous is because um, Austin and Catherine were looking for a house to move into after their last house got broken into. And they wanted something more private, which I understand. I understand wanting privacy when you're famous. They are famous, you know, as much as we don't really like them, we can't take away from their success. It's huge. They're famous, they're being stalked by their fans, which to be fair, when you show the outside of your house and you have a young audience that are gonna do stupid things because they're young, I'm not victim blaming because I don't want to do that. But at the same time, like don't show the outside of your house, mainly when you have a young audience that doesn't understand social boundaries and what's appropriate, what's inappropriate. So maybe let's stop showing the outside of our house, which they did mention in their recent video, which I really, really appreciate. You know, they said they would do a house tour, but they're not going to show the outside of the house, which I think is a great idea for privacy, um, just in general, mainly with having kids in the house. I just don't think it's safe or responsible to show the outside of your house. So I just think Great idea from them. But they did have their house broken into because they showed the outside of the house and people are gonna assume, you know, if they see the outside of the house, even if it's not like fans, um, just people that rob houses for a living, um, if they see a really expensive house, well, if they see a very rich family on the internet showing the outside of their house, they know exactly who the victim is when they're out of town. You know, they're posting on their Instagram stories and Snapchat stories that they're like on holiday and that the house is empty. It's basically just like luring robbers and burglars in. That was a a lot of mouthful. Um, it's basically just like luring people in to, to rob your house when you're not in the house. It's quite literally the plot of The Bling Ring, which was a movie that I really, really enjoyed when I was younger. It's about this group of teenagers that end up breaking into celebrity houses because they look for the addresses online and then they look for any magazines or, paparaz or paparazzi kind of pictures showing the celebrities being out of town or at events and then they would break into these people's houses and steal stuff from them and just leave one of those people being paris hilton that they robbed like it was a it was an ongoing scheme for them until they got caught so this is just giving me those vibes uh where it's like you're basically showing someone like this is what the outside of my house looks like this is the inside plan of the house this is the 
you know, these are the designer things that we have that are very expensive and exactly where we hide them and this is exactly when we're out of the house so you can come in and steal and then leave um recent one of that was also molly may and tommy fury once again i'm not saying any of this to victim blame i'm just saying it's like a learning experience it's a learning curve being famous um and going through all of this which sucks that they're having to go through this but at the same time i think it will just help them be more vigilant next time and be more responsible next time in not showing the outside of their house um because they know the effects and the consequences of that now um, I think no one really thinks about that before they get famous and then, you know, they go through something like this and they're like, oh, we can't do this anymore because we're too famous for this. Uh, Molly May and Tommy Fury, um, they didn't necessarily show the outside of their house, but they showed like inside and they showed the area that they live in, which is very, like, it's very easy at that point to de deduce um figure out where they live obviously she films in like she did a house tour so they know where the wardrobe is where all the expensive stuff are stuff are stuff is where all the expensive stuff is and when she was away on a brand trip uh, it was like an event for a brand that she works with um they obviously saw that she was on her instagram stories posting and stuff so they actually broke in and stole all of her designer stuff uh, because they knew exactly where it was where she lived and where she was at the time so it's just very easy to, it's easier to break into a celebrity's house than it is to break into a regular person's house, regular rich person's house, because you don't have as much information about the regular rich. Does that make sense? Anyway, so she wanted more privacy. They found this lot, but not only did they find this lot, they found these two houses next to each other. And immediately they asked the people in charge of the lots if they could join them together. They said, yes, absolutely. They buy them, they start building. Then recently, obviously, we found out that the house was getting foreclosed on. The auction was halfway through October. And then we actually found out about the house being sold on the TMG podcast, which is Cody Co and Noel Miller's um, podcast that they have. But Cody Co said that he spoke to a guy who said that he bought a house for really cheap from a controversial family. Um, and obviously Cody was like, oh, you mean the Ace family? And he was like, yeah, yeah, I bought it for really cheap. They like really got screwed on it. They heavily overpaid, put a lot of money into the house didn't pay for it and then they lost it and now I bought it for really cheap and I'm gonna just like flip it and make money on it. So that was really interesting. And then obviously the Ace family saw all of that go down and they posted their video called Our House Story. Um, they started with saying that they didn't address this before because they couldn't like navigate the situation. They didn't know what was going on and now they've navigated it. They're doing a thing. Like I said, they wanted more secluded, more private. So they did two lots into one house. So they would have like more space around the house and they could like gate it properly. They entered into escrow without a certificate of occupancy which is very important in the states um i'm not sure how, what the equivalent of that is in the uk because i'm not a homeowner but essentially it just shows that you're the occupant of the house and that it has passed all the checks um to make sure that someone can live in the house um they didn't have any of those checks so essentially they weren't even properly the owners of the house they had no gas apparently which means no heat no hot water no cooking abilities so they just use like these burners for cooking and apparently the contractor kept on telling them like oh you'll get the certificate of occupancy next week and the week after that and the week after that and at no point did it get the certificate of occupancy like two years later they still don't have it the front door was supposed to be over forty thousand dollars and what ended up happening is the contractor paid two thousand for it and then pocketed the rest and it was basically just plywood but the thing is it was supposed to be this like mahogany door um but literally in the videos where she sh catherine is like vlogging you can see the unfinished door in the background it looks like plywood so realistically they should have like done the due diligence and found someone to like look over all of this stuff apparently this contractor didn't even have a contracting license he was just using someone else's which once again why are we not shopping around for contractors why are we just like grabbing any random guy that comes our way i feel like people are people with a lot less money than them are putting in a lot more work to make sure they don't get scammed and they don't have like the resources to do all of this like looking around and you know figuring out if they're being scammed or not like when you have the kind of money to buy two expensive houses in LA and join them together into one house you also have the money to shop around a bit you know do your research figure out who the best is in the area why would they just grab this like random contractor that they didn't even know properly didn't fact check anything like I don't know I just feel like it, there's just, there was just no due diligence with building this house at all there was a lot wrong with the house they put a lot of money into it and then they had loan issues so they actually were told that they would get a loan for x amount of money and then when the loan kind of came back the guy that was figuring out the loan for them came back it was actually double the price per month than what they wanted to pay by that point they were like okay fine we'll just pay it the loan was only for 18 months so they got this um this weird loan where essentially you have the house loan for 18 months and after the 18 months you have to find a way to get another loan on the house because they're not going to keep on lending you money so it's almost like a temporary mortgage is the best way i can explain this it's just kind of like you can pay us for 18 months and after that find someone else to loan you the money 
After 18 months, obviously they still didn't have the certificate of occupancy, which is very important. And they started looking for loans and no one wanted to give them one because they didn't have the certificate. And they found one lender who would give them money. They sent money, money bounced back. And the guy said, hey, sorry, I actually don't feel really comfortable lending you money because this house just seems really sketchy. Like you guys don't even have a certificate. Like you're doing a lot of work, but nothing's going on. You have no gas. Like I can't do this. So they basically at that point decided to just not pay any money to anyone, pay any bills. They're like, oh, we're just loanless. Like we're not, no one's giving us a loan. So we're just not going to try and sell the house or figure a loan out, figure out how to get the certificate of occupancy going. They were just like, we're just gonna stop paying our bills because we can't get a loan. And then I remember in Instagram stories or Snapchat stories, Catherine was like, how could people assume that we didn't pay our bills? Like, of course we pay our bills. Of course we can afford to pay our bills. But like, she literally just admitted that she struggled to find a loan. And so therefore she decided to just stop paying for the house. Isn't that not paying the bills? <laughs> like I understand that the situation is a little bit different here, but that's quite literally the definition of not paying your bills. Cause that's why the house got foreclosed on. They're trying to make it sound like they did this on purpose. Like, oh, we couldn't find a loan. The house was sketchy. We didn't have a certificate. So we just like let them foreclose on our house because we wanted to sell it anyway. So it's just easier to let them like, foreclose on it. A lot of people have theories that this lender um, initially that gave them the money was actually like a social media lender situation. Like, you know how um, there's like content houses or like there's these um, lenders that will like help influencers do stuff and it's always really sketchy. People thought it was like an individual that was basically just giving them money for 18 months and that he knew it was sketchy, they knew it was sketchy, but they just kind of went along with it. And that he then bought the house back from them essentially through the foreclosure got it for like a really good deal and is now going to flip it and sell it for more. So he he did tend people are thinking he might have actually scammed them, but they might have been doing scamming as well because Cody Co on that podcast episode said that the guy who bought the house off them said that they said that they would be using this house for business. Um, So it would be almost like a set, like how you'd buy a house for a movie or for a set um to film in. But if you buy a house for business, you can't live in it. Um, they were definitely living in it. We saw they were living in it. Okay. So now people are saying, is it, could they have possibly tried to do a little tax situation where they're trying to business expense the whole house and say that it's for work when it's actually for them. And that's why they couldn't get the certificate of occupancy. And that's why, even though this guy technically scammed them, like gave them this loan for 18 months, scammed them and then bought it off them for really, really cheap because it got foreclosed on and it's now going to flip it and make money off it. They can't really do anything about it because apparently allegedly he knows that they were doing something wrong as well possibly that's like a conspiracy theory that people have going on because in this video Catherine and Austin say that they're not going to be suing these people because these people have like no money to their name which bear in mind this lender just spent millions of dollars on this house that was just foreclosed on it was going on auction so he had to have this money like ready to pay for this house he doesn't sound like he doesn't have money to his name like I'm sure if you sued him you get some money out of him. Um, but they're saying they're not going to sue these people because they don't have any money to their name and it just wouldn't be worth the effort. Which, like, I think if you spend that much time and money and effort on a house that allegedly was, like, taken from you through a scam, I would probably try to sue. But I don't know because I've never been in this situation. Anyway, so they're saying they're not going to be suing. And some people are saying, like, this isn't, isn't it a bit weird that they're not suing? Is it possibly because they know that they can't sue because they'll have a counter suit or they'll have to show information that is making them look really sketchy? Like, for example buying a house for business and then using it for personal use, which is illegal, allegedly, allegedly. And if they tried to sue, they'd have to show all of that information, which would make, which would incriminate them, essentially. That would make some sense, considering whenever people reported on this story, um, they showed in the documents that the house was owned by Ace Hat, which is the company, rather than individuals like Austin McBroom, Catherine McBroom, it was owned by Ace Hat. So it would add up that they allegedly bought this house for business and then were using it for personal use. And that's why they couldn't apply for the certificate of occupancy because a lot of things were sketchy, not just from the other side, but from their side as well. And possibly they might've got scammed because the guy saw that they were doing something sketchy and basically made the most of it and essentially just used their sketchy against them. And, and at some point, um, Catherine says he about the lender rather than they, which would make it sound like it's an individual, which once again makes it sound like this is like a social media investor who might have, may or may not have scammed them or used this disadvantage to buy a house for really cheap and flip it really cheap, less than what it's actually worth and flip it. But possibly he knew he could do that and get away with it because he saw that they were doing something sketchy, AKA allegedly buying a house for business and using it for personal use, which is not good 
for taxes. Well, it's good for taxes unless you get caught and then it's not good for taxes. They also do that whole thing where they're like, oh my God, these pesky drama channels. I just, they just keep on talking about us. And like people in our industry are making fun of us. They just are laughing at our like expense. And I was like, we're not laughing at you for losing your house. We're laughing at the fact that they essentially were super irresponsible with money. They're being sued left, right and center, losing their house, losing this amazing opportunity they had to be financially stable and secure and they're throwing all of that away to flex on the internet with things that they can't actually afford right now and that they were then acting like nothing was going on because whenever people brought it up to them they were like no of course we're not like losing our house but they fully well knew that they were and they were just making fools out of their fans but also it just kind of seems like this is like the perfect representation of social media where it's like oh my god this perfect life this perfect family with so much money when in reality like their houses like they're losing their house the house was like leaking and it was really poorly built and they didn't even have gas, they didn't have hot water. Like it, it's just like the perfect representation of this is what you see on social media and this is what's actually happening behind the scenes. Other than the video, we also have Catherine's reactions since the video. So we have her posting a conversation between her and her dad on Snapchat where he essentially compares SA to what they've been going through which is disgusting. He says, sometimes I have to just respond to these assholes with all due respect, sorry, you're wrong. Lawsuits don't say anything about a person's character or about a corporation or enterprise. Maybe criminal cases do, but not lawsuits. Let's look at the differences. A civil lawsuit occurs when yada, yada, yada. We'd have to know what the definitions are. Now, does that mean that they have done anything criminal? No, it only means that they are not judgment proof. And in others, that they simply have disagreements with their businesses, partners, or vice versa. Apple Inc, for example, gets hundreds of lawsuits on a daily basis. I don't suppose you think that the products are bad, do you? Most likely you even have an iPhone. So you're basically just being like, the civil lawsuits and then there's criminal lawsuits and people are judging this as if it's like a criminal lawsuit when in reality it's civil and it doesn't mean that they're like bad people, they're just being sued. That's what he's trying to say, okay? Wonderful. Instead, people suing them are doing so because they have disagreements, concerns, or simply because Apple is not judgment-proof. You see, unfortunately, when a party is not judgment-proof, everyone wants to sue you simply because they could get something from you. I should speak of my daughter's ongoing civil cases, but obviously we can't. But trust me, you know nothing about my daughter's character. This type of hate can only spring from jealousy and bitterness. Blaming my daughter for what happened with her house is like blaming a victim of seducing her attacker because she was wearing a miniskirt. And this is where I have to clock out. Our concerns and criticisms regarding the way they have managed their money and their business is not in any way, shape or form comparable to criticizing a SA victim. Um, it's good, sir. May we please not do this? Next. I'm not even gonna read the rest of the message. It doesn't really matter. That was just the part that I wanted to bring up because I thought it was disgusting that she would even decide to post that on her story. Someone said, girl, I feel like you're losing your mind trying to convince or explain yourself. You're never going to win against the 8 billion people in the world. Let's go, let go and put your focus on something else. Um, what are you saying, Lucy? I haven't spoken about anything for the entirety of my career as an entertainer. I've been quiet for years. So if I choose to repost my dad's comment defending me or if I choose to speak up for once in my life, I can. There are millions of people here watching my story that are happy to finally see me speak up and it won't end here. I'm no longer going to allow people to bully me and my family and take advantage of us and I'm not losing my mind. If I had that quality, I would have a very long time ago. Now, she says that she has stayed silent since the start of her career, but every single time Austin gets accused of cheating, she's out here defending him. He's never defending himself. She's defending him as if she was there in the club with him and the girls to see with her own two eyes. She wasn't. She was at home with the kids. So to say that she's always been quiet is a bit of a lie, okay? Then we have these people setting up sounds so weird. She says, there's not too many, but what I learned is when you speak up and show vulnerability, that's when people t get fake offended or try to bring you down. I'm the opposite. I lift people up when they are down. Someone said, if I had that quality, what quality are you referring to? I'm genuinely curious. She said, losing my mind on social media, meaning I've kept my composure for years and dealt with things privately. Everyone loses their mind. We all do. Lol. She also posted on her Instagram story saying, thank you guys for all the support in last video. Uh, means so much. Before I put this behind me, I'd like to share some other issues that we had that we didn't add in the video. I know I don't need to, but it's my choice. Hopefully it can help others who are home buyers and future home buyers. And no, I don't want anyone to feel bad for me. So it's not about that. If it was, I would have shared this all years ago. And for those criticizing our decisions and blaming us for the issues, shame on you. People need to understand this all started in 2018, um, four years ago when I believed in people. I believe that people were good and honest. I believe that I was around good people, but we were taken advantage of. It's caused me to move differently and change my trust due to life experiences. It was a learning lesson. It's so nice to finally speak up. And she posted, you know, just like the issues with the house, um, essentially. And that is actually it um, for everything. Uh, my theory is um, something sketchy was going on behind the scenes. Either party was probably doing something sketchy. Like I said, on the TMG podcast, Cody did mention that the guy that bought the house off them through the foreclosure did say that they said it was for business when they were using it for personal use. He said that. That's not like, 
That's allegedly what happened. That's what he said. As someone who's like in that situation and buying the house, I'm sure he has like a good understanding of the situation. And he did say that they said it was for business use and they were actually using it for personal use, which would explain why even if they got taken advantage of, they can't really do anything about it because they'd have to expose themselves. But that's all alleged information. Let me know what you guys think. Like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.